happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you guys are doing all right. Um, I am here today to share with you something I am making for dinner here at home tonight, which is homemade spätzle or spätzle, um, as our German teacher, Mr. Brunker, would say. So um, I'm gonna go over a few of the items that we're going to need today. So um, it's a very simple recipe. A lot of you probably have these ingredients in your home. And um, if you wanna do your mise en place and get your stuff out and ready to go, that would be great. So you're going to need flour, salt, pepper, milk, and eggs, and a stick of butter. All right, and so those are the things you can go get, and I will be back to share with you how to make this recipe. All right, so here is our recipe. We're going to need two large eggs beaten, one fourth cup of milk, one cup of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a dash of pepper, and a half a stick of butter. So I'm gonna show you, I have my measuring equipment out and ready to go for my flour, my pepper, my milk, and my eggs are ready to go. I am gonna double this recipe, and because this is something our family loves, so I can't just make one batch, they would be sad. So I'm gonna show you how to put together the spetzel. It's a very simple recipe. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is four eggs, because I'm doubling my recipe. just to take a fork and lightly give them a turn. We want them slightly beaten. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our milk. And I already went ahead and measure our, measured our milk in a liquid measuring cup. Go ahead and, and just like if you were making scrambled eggs, incorporate that milk. Okay, so the next step for a spetzel is we are going to add a half teaspoon of salt, and I have these wonderful Pampered Chef measuring spoons that are my favorite because they slide and it's all the measuring spoons in one. I'm gonna measure over my egg bowl so if I have any spillage, it doesn't go into my spetzel. All right, give that a mix. We're gonna use a dash of pepper. And then we're ready for the flour. What's neat about this recipe is I'm using a fork, a bowl, and I'm also boiling a pot of water. Um, and I have my fry pan ready with my butter because my kiddos love their spetzels toasted a little bit and it'll go great with our pork chops tonight for dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and then measure my two cups of flour. I'm gonna scoop and scrape my flour. I'm gonna add my two cups. All right, so I'm gonna add my two cups of flour and then I'm just gonna mix it. What's great about spetzel is you can make it, boil it and fry it and use it as a side dish like we're using it tonight. Or you could add it to your favorite turkey or chicken soup. This is also the dumpling noodle that is used in the famous famous dish called chicken paprikash. So um, it's a super versatile dumpling. And what I love about it is I don't need any special ingredients. I have all of these ingredients on hand in my pantry most of the time. All right, most recipes out there will tell you water can be used for this, but I find that they're creamier and they have more of a soft bite if you use the milk. So as you notice, as I'm mixing, it's getting really hard to mix. This is a noodle dough. This is very sticky. It's very dense. And that's what we want. Just try to get as many of the lumps out as you can. And we're waiting for our water to be a rolling boil. So I will be back in a few minutes once my water is a rolling boil to show you the next step in spetzel making. Thank you. All right, so our water is now a rolling boil and you definitely want it to be bubbling like the pot is bubbling at this time. All right, and we have, um, before I show you how to drop the spetzel, you can uh, make sure you have a half a stick of butter 
in a fry pan ready to go and I have a couple other tools over here I have a hand sieve you don't need this this is something I'm just going to use for demonstration purposes at home I would um, if I wasn't on video showing you how to do this quickly um, I would just have a strainer down in my sink to drain my spetzel when they're ready so um, so I have the hand sieve and then I also have a pancake turner to move that butter around in the pan Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our spoon down into the boiling water and we're going to kind of set the bowl carefully on the side of the pan. That's and I'm you. just going to take small little bits and drop them into the pan. If it starts to stick to my spoon, I'm just gonna dip it in the hot water and I'm going to do this until it's done. You don't wanna go any more than a half a teaspoon of Spetzel dough or your spetzels will become these huge monstrosities that are raw in the middle, and we don't want that. We want nice small bits. So I'm gonna drop probably half the bowl in, and then I wanna show you what the next step looks like. It's actually fun. This is very therapeutic for me. Um, it's something I, I very much enjoy making for my family, especially my kids. They love spetzel nights, and I usually pair spetzel with um, pork, so pork chops, or tonight we're doing grilled pork chops, per pork loin. This is also really good for fried chicken on the side. So, okay. As you notice, as I drop my spetzel into the water, that it stopped boiling as, as um, fiercely as it was boiling before. So once that happens, I'm just gonna pause because I did do a double batch. And as you can see, they're floating to the top. Once my spetzel float to the top of the pan, they're ready to come out of the water. That is how fast this is to make. So this is one of those side dishes or even lunch and menu items that if you are hungry, this can be ready within a 20 minute time frame, which is pretty cool. As long as you remember to get your water boiling first. So I'm gonna show you this one really quick. If I were making this, um, all of it, I would use that strainer over there, but for time purposes, I'm gonna show you this way. So I'm gonna scoop the spetzel that are done out of the water. I got my butter sizzling over here, and I'm gonna put them down into the melted butter. Now, you can eat them just like this. A little bit of salt on them. You can um, put them in a bowl and just melt butter on them. But like I said, my family really enjoys them being toasted. And when you fry them, what's really neat is um, they take on the flavor of whatever you're frying them in. So they'll be very buttery and a very delicious side dish. So I'm just gonna put a, I'm gonna get all of them out of there. They cook really fast when you make them the correct size. All right. And a side bonus is as you stand over the pan, your face gets a facial from the steam. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat up a little bit now. I love cast iron skillets. This is what we use here at home. I just, I very much enjoy my cast iron. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna give it some time in the pan until it browns up a little bit. It will take a few minutes for the uh, spetzel to brown. So while we're waiting for those to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and drop some more. Remember, just little bits. I like to get the edge of the bowl done because this dough will dry out really fast and I don't want any of it wasted. I want every piece of it that can be part of dinner to be part of dinner. So little bits into the pan. I'm gonna show you an example of one that's way too big, all right? My great grandmother used to help my mom make these and it, <laughs> my mom's like, I wanna make it this done fast. So my mom would drop one like that. I'm gonna show you what happens with that one. It'll, it won't cook all the way. It'll be pretty raw in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna scrape them in. And then when they float, they're ready to brown. Or when they float, you can strain them, add a little salt, add a little pepper. Salt is delicious. Salt is delicious, it's one of my favorite things. Or garlic powder. Oh, you know what, you could brown some bacon chop that up and put it in with your cooked spetzel. Make sure your bacon's cooked first. Um, cabbage, you know, it being St. Patrick's Day, you can add bacon and cabbage with your spetzel. 
and have a vegetable, meat, and a carbohydrate dish all in one bowl. All right. If you're watching um, healthy oils, instead of using butter, you could fry them in a little bit of olive oil, toast them up in a little bit of olive oil to make them a little healthier. So, okay. So let's take a look. Oh, that's a good sizzle. That is a good sizzle. It's making my heart happy. All right, so um, they're just getting light brown. I don't really want them to get crispy. I just want them to just toast up a little. So I'm gonna pull one up and or have a camera come to me. Come on over. Just got a light, crispy top. That's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn them over. They're not gonna get real brown. You'll burn them. So you just light toast and then that's it. So you will then hopefully find a pretty plate to put them on. I should have got all this out before, but I didn't. Let's see. Let's see them good on a green plate for St. Patrick's Day. All right. So I'll put a few on a plate. You could chop up an onion and fry an onion in there. And there you have it. A delicious side dish for your dinner.